So, Mr. Steve, you are about to go off to your mother's. Any final words before you leave? Yes. Oh. Wish me luck. Anyway, Mr. Duncan, I'm only joking, because my mother will watch this later. <laughs> I'm off to see my mother, yes. Have a wonderful live show. I won't be there, of course, but I will be there in recorded mode. That sounds very good. Now, can you say... <laughs> It's just after two o'clock here in the UK, and this is Live English. You've just said it. It's just after two o'clock here in the UK, and it's Live English with Mr Duncan. Doobie-doobie-doobie-doo. Oh, my goodness. Well, here I am. Eventually, I've made it here in one piece. Just about. Hi, everybody. It's Mr. Duncan in England. How are you today? Are you OK? I hope so. Are you happy? I really, really hope so. Here we go again. Oh, my goodness. I don't know where to begin. I don't know where to start. It has been absolutely crazy here today. This is what happens when Mr. Steve disappears. Everything falls to pieces. It's almost as if we need Mr. Steve here to keep everything together. But sadly, sadly, everything went wrong today. Most of the things that went wrong weren't my fault thank goodness but I did have some problems with the technology but not here the electricity kept going off this morning so we had a couple of power cuts this morning the electricity kept going off which caused a few problems with the computer so because of the power cuts which I have no control over unfortunately <sighs> everything went a little bit wrong that's all i'm saying for now because we are here and that's all that matters so it's mother's day today hello to mothers everywhere around the world now i know what you're going to say before you say it you are going to say mr duncan in my country we don't have mother's day today so it is mother's day it's mothering sunday here in the uk but I thought it would be nice today to do something for all mothers around the world, for every mother watching. So I thought today we would do something special. I will give you a chance to say hello to your mother live on YouTube. Does that sound like a good idea? So let's see if we can get the live chat working because not much else has been working today. <laughs> <laughs> so let's see if we can get the live chat working come on live chat where are you <laughs> let's see if we can get it working well that that looks all right but I think it needs to be a bit larger that doesn't look very good does it let's let's try and get that a little larger yes there we go ah oh yes that looks good I like that yes that's quite nice so yes we have the live chat everyone Thank goodness things have gone a little bit crazy here today. We had a couple of power cuts earlier. The electricity went off. Can you believe it? So there it is. Hooray. Yes, we have the live chat, everyone. Thank you for joining me today. Lots of people already here. Hello to Farda. Also, hello to Christina and Tias Mohammed is here as well Fard says Mother's Day is on a different day it is on the 8th of March but not today now I think you mean the 3rd of August so do you mean the 3rd of August or do you mean the 8th of March <laughs> because if you get those numbers the wrong way round you end up with a completely different date so lots of people here on the live chat. Oh, my goodness. What a crazy day it has been so far. So 
it wasn't my fault the reason why I'm late today is because we had a power cut the the electricity kept going off this morning and unfortunately it did affect the computer and that's the reason why I am here late now but I hope you can hear me okay I hope you can see me okay I hope everything is coming through of course when you lose the electricity it also affects the connection to the internet as well so I really do hope I'm keeping my fingers crossed that everything is all right with the connection as well so let's get on because we've got lots of things to do it is a slightly shorter live stream today I will be here for just one and a half hours there is no Mr Steve today sadly no Mr Steve but we will have him a little bit later on with some special things that he recorded for us last night but of course the first question must be what was the view like this morning so there it is a very murky a very misty and damp Sunday morning here in the UK so there it is a very misty day we had snow last week and now the snow has gone <laughs> the snow has disappeared and just to show that the snow has gone there is the last snow of spring there it is the last snow of this spring and that is all that is left of all of the snow that fell last week just just that little patch of snow that is all that's left the last snow of spring so spring is definitely on the way and as if we needed reminding oh yes yesterday I noticed when I went for my meal in much Wenlock there was myself and also Mr Steve I noticed on the table where I was sitting there were some lovely daffodils yes so there is a sign that spring is definitely on the way you can see that springtime is approaching and there it is a hint of spring hint when we say hint we mean a slight suggestion something that is a beautiful subtle sign of something happening so there it is a hint of spring with some lovely daffodils and we will be looking at some more flowers later on because of course it is mother's day today if you want to say hello to your mother today you will have a super chance to say so later on because the live chat is up and running here it is again for those who want to say hello Pedro is here in Brazil we celebrate Mother's Day which is always the second Sunday of May so Pedro will be celebrating Mother's Day in May hello Mr Duncan happy to see you thank you Joseph X. nice to see you again Prasad is here hello to you as well Agnes and also Lagell Mr Duncan in in Italy Mother's Day is in May so it would appear that a lot of people are celebrating Mother's Day later in the year but today here in the UK it is Mothering Sunday yes spring is just around the corner oh I don't know about you but springtime seems to have taken forever to arrive this year I don't know why it feels as if we've had a very long winter this year I don't know where you are <laughs> but where I am it's been a very long winter what is the photo behind you I think it is you with your mother yes Leonard you are right if you look closely you can see that there is a photograph of me with my mum so there she is there's my mother as a way of celebrating Mother's Day today so can you see that I've given up 
my mother's day today i could have been going to see my mother today but instead i stayed here to broadcast live to you on this sunday afternoon so can i say hello to my mum i will see you very soon don't worry i haven't forgotten about you and of course i did send a lovely mother's day card to my mother as well and inside the card i put this photograph so this photograph is actually inside the card that i sent to my mother so there it is a lovely photograph this picture was taken many years ago way back in 1991 it's true and there is my mother and myself having a lovely day out so thanks for joining me i'm sorry that i'm a little late today it's unfortunate that i was late but i can't help it really so let's get straight into the business which is talking in english i hope you have had a good week and i hope you have had a good weekend i hope it's all gone well mystery idioms would you like to have a look at today's mystery idioms because last week we ran out of time so this week i'm going to make sure that we don't run out of time here are today's mystery idioms here comes the first one right now today's first mystery idiom can you see it so there it is it is a well-known phrase and a well-known expression it is something that we use in english so the clue is in the picture and also the text underneath so there it is and the second mystery idiom there it is so these are well-known expressions in english the answers coming later on and there is the first one again but what is it what are today's mystery idioms if you think you know the answers let me know and of course i will reveal the answers later on sadly there is no mr steve but there will be some videos featuring mr steve he will be with me later talking about idioms and expressions connected to mothers i think that's quite suitable and also mr steve will be here reading some lovely poetry would you like to have a poem right now from mr steve okay here it comes especially for all you mothers another mother's day is here bringing joy and pleasures new on this special day mother dear i want to remember you i cannot give you costly gifts and as i've told you this before no matter what i give to you you give back much much more i'm giving you a pure sweet rose gathered in the early morn this rose you planted in my heart the day that i was born in kindly loving thoughts of you and with the faith you still impart the rose i give to you today is the love that's in my heart oh wasn't that lovely a lovely mother's day poem from mr steve he will be back later on video sadly mr steve is not here live today because he has gone to see his mother so that is where he is at the moment sitting with his mum and the rest of his family probably eating something very nice and making me very jealous at the same time because i'm quite hungry to be honest so we have lots of mr steve coming i know that there are many mr steve fans watching out there now the name of the game as far as i'm concerned is to teach english and of course i do receive lots and lots of questions from people about the english language and here is an excerpt from one of my special ask 
Mr. Duncan lessons. What are the differences between less and lesser? This question comes from Eugene, who lives in South Korea. The word less is used to show that the amount, level or quantity of something is not as much as something else. It can show a desire for a certain quantity compared with before. Could I have less sugar in my tea today? A higher amount is more. A lower amount is less. We say more or less to show that something is about right. Is this an accurate description? More or less. Lesser is used when we are making a direct comparison between two things. We compare them. We highlight the lesser of the two. So lesser refers to the lower item or the smaller thing. The effect of one thing may not be as bad as the other. The lesser of the two is much safer. The phrase, the lesser of the two evils, means that one thing is not as bad as the other, even though both are seen as wrong. The opposite of lesser is greater. The opposite of less is more. A nice email. I have received a nice email from Irina in Siberia who would like me to say a big hello to her students at the School of Tomorrow in the town of Cyanogorsk. The School of Tomorrow. I think that is a wonderful name for a school. And I would like to wish all of the students there a great new school term and good luck with your English studies. What does the phrase swear by mean? Does it mean that you will say something bad? This question was sent in by Rachel, who lives on the beautiful island of Sardinia. The phrase swear by means that you are trusting something for its effect or its ability. You always use that particular thing. You swear by it. It is a kind of recommendation. I always use this particular shampoo. I swear by it. Swear by is not the same as swear on. Swear on relates to giving a promise or oath. I swear on my mother's life that it is true. Having said that, we can say swear by when giving an oath in a law court. For example, here in England, we are made to swear on a sacred book, such as the Bible or Quran. Before giving evidence during a trial, we will say, I swear by Almighty God. It serves as both a symbolic gesture and a legally binding oath to show that you are going to be honest. I will tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Why do you teach English? This question comes from Alexandre Ziani, who lives in Brazil and is himself an English teacher. First of all, it is worth mentioning that I have always been fascinated by communication of all types, be it among humans or other forms of wildlife. The words spoken verbally and the unspoken language we all use with our bodies really do fascinate me. As a child, I loved writing stories. They served as an escape from my otherwise dull childhood. Fantasy and imagination were my outlets, and knowledge became my constant pursuit. What seemed strange then has enabled me to pass on all the things I have learned. Knowledge is there to be shared, and what better way is there of doing this than through teaching? For me, it has always been a natural transition. The fondest memories of my childhood come from those who offered words of encouragement and support. Through my English teacher and my art teacher, I was able to hold on to something which has stayed with me to this very day. The feeling of self-worth and purpose. So, why do I teach English? Why do I teach it all? Over the years, I have come to fully realise the true value of education. It is not only there to instruct, 
It also allows those you teach to realize their own potential. It encourages them to always aim high and never give up. A good teacher will always encourage this. It's that time again. Here it is once again, the feature to end all features, the bit to end all bits, the part to end all parts, the segment to end... Oh, well, you get the idea. It's the word of the week. Glee. This week's word is short and sweet. The word is glee. This is a noun which expresses delight, joy and happiness. To be lively and joyous. In American English, the word is used in glee club, which means a group of people who get together to sing. A choral group, a group of performers who sing short songs together. The word glee has now become popular thanks to the US TV show of the same name. Some more nice emails. I have received a nice email from Vicky in Mexico who describes my video lessons as awesome and asks if I will be making some more idiom and slang lessons. Yes, Vicky, I'm planning to produce some more lessons featuring both idioms and slang terms later this year, so keep a lookout for them. A big thank you also to Ravinda in India, who wrote to tell me how helpful my lessons have been, especially from the point of view of providing something new each time to help build those all-important communication skills. I'm glad to hear that my lessons have proved so beneficial to you both. Another fascinating idiom. This is red tape. It is a very useful material. It also happens to be an English idiom. Red tape refers to rules and regulations or procedures connected with them. This phrase is often used in a negative way to express an overcomplicated procedure. Governments often use red tape to slow down the speed of a decision or change in law. When we want to speed up the procedure, then we will try and cut through all the red tape. Its origin comes from the fact that most official British government documents were usually tied with red tape. Why won't you read my email out? I've sent it many times. Recently, I have received some angry emails from students who feel annoyed that I have not read their emails out. First of all, I can promise that I read every email which is sent to me. Sadly, I cannot reply in person due to the amount of questions I receive. Each week I choose three or four questions to answer and I try to give everyone a chance to be mentioned. This has always been my aim. So if your email question is not answered this week, there is still a chance that it could be read out at a later date. Another thing to mention is that if you repeatedly send the same question in to me from the same address, then your emails will most likely be sent to the junk mailbox as spam, which means I will never get to see any of them at all. Please send your questions and comments just once. If you have a question, mark it as English question. If you just want a special hello, please mark the message as special hello. I love hearing from you all as it makes my work so much more of a joy to do.
do 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 yes it is mother's day today a big hello to all the mothers watching in the uk and of course all those watching around the world if you want to say hello to your mum today feel free it's no problem hi from lithuania mother's day is on the first sunday of may it would appear that mother's day is celebrated later in the year whereas here in the uk it is celebrated well today <laughs> so today the 11th of march 2018 it is mother's day mothering sunday here in the uk hello from algeria thank you very much hello from takistan hello from afghanistan lots of people around the world watching today i notice you have changed a lot in your appearance i think that video was made in 2010 yes time is running out very quickly i am very aware all the time that time goes very quickly especially as you get older the one thing you realize as you get older is that time goes very very quickly mr duncan how did you invent the characters i mean mr lomax how did i invent them i'm not sure i'm not sure they just popped in my head one day <laughs> i don't know how or why but well they just they just appeared as if by magic sergio i want to send a huge hug and kiss to my mother who lives in another city far away from where i'm working thank you sergio and a big hug and kiss for sergio's mum leonard is here you are popular mr duncan and you are still young thank you very much for your vote of support there greetings to your mother greetings to anne your mother thank you very much belarusia thank you for giving us such a good teacher <laughs> yes my mum is very proud of me i must say hi from dijon oh hello hello to you and also hello to tila khan hello and also to julia could you say hello to my mother alexandra please hello to julia's mother alexandra a happy mother's day from england just for you so would you like another poem from mr steve okay here is another mother's day poem courtesy of the man who sadly isn't here today he is actually visiting his own mother at this very moment so this is a mother's day poem from the point of view of a boy when i was a boy when i was a boy younger than i am today i never really understood all the things that you would say and i didn't quite realize how much you sacrificed for me you taught me so much and made me the man you now see but i was always aware from the very start that you loved me so much and with all of your heart so on this special day i wanted to make sure you knew that i appreciate all you've done and say that i love you happy mother's day isn't that lovely thank you very much mr steve oh look look at the view outside at the moment it is a beautiful scene with birds feeding live this is actually a live view at the moment outside the sun has gone in the sun was out a few moments ago but it's gone in now isn't that a shame so there it is a lovely view outside and you can hear the birds singing and the sound of nature so there it is live outside at the moment lots of birds feeding from the bird feeders on mother's day oh yes it is mother's day here in england would you like to find out if there are any idioms or any phrases to do 
with mothers or your mother <laughs> or my mother or anyone's mother okay let's do that right now shall we let's have a look here I think we have something here for Mother's Day oh yes and guess who is starring guess who stars in this bit you've guessed right it's Mr Steve so it's a Sunday afternoon where you are and I know that many people will be missing Mr Steve sadly Mr Steve is not with us live today but we are here now on Saturday evening doing something very special because Mr Steve is going to join us right now and he's going to tell us all about what he is doing today what exactly is Mr Steve doing for this Mother's Day here he comes now oh hello hello everybody well, I want to make sure I'm standing in the middle because Mr Duncan will be <laughs> annoyed <laughs> yes lovely to see you all I'm not live uh, because I'm going to visit my mother tomorrow because it's Mother's Day or Mothering Sunday as we uh, can also call it so what do we tend to do on Mother's Day well Mother's Day is really a celebration of of your mother and to show love for your mother and uh, what I'm doing tomorrow is I'm going to travel to where my mother lives which is about 60 miles from here and my sister's going to be there and uh, my sister's children so uh, I, that'll be quite exciting we're going out for a meal and we're going to smother our mother in love and say thank you mum for being such a wonderful mum or mother uh, after all these years and uh, I'm going to give of course a gift because traditionally we always give gifts to mothers on Mother's Day now the common things of course are chocolates and flowers and also a card you've got to send a card and I've got one here that I'm going to be sending to my mother well I'm going to be taking it with me tomorrow I'm not posting it because I'm going so I hope there aren't any adverse weather conditions otherwise my mother won't receive her Mother's Day card so there we go this says to a wonderful mum happy Mother's Day and as you can see it's covered in flowers because mothers tend to like flowers you can get humorous cards Mr Duncan yesterday uh, was going to get one for his mother which had uh, a monkey on the front knitting uh, so but he decided not to get that in the end because he thought that she might be offended uh, but so yes play safe and go for something like this with flowers on and you can't really go wrong uh, and talking of flowers this is what I've bought for my mother some wonderful flowers <laughs> all sorts of scents and colors these were quite expensive so I hope she appreciates <laughs> the money that I've spent but it's not about the money it's about saying to your mum here you go love you mummy you've been so these aren't for you Mr mm. Duncan they're for my mother tomorrow they smell lovely As if I would buy him flowers they I smell wouldn't. they smell gorgeous they're very nice your mother is very lucky that she all, is that's all I can say don't ask me what the flowers are actually I've just noticed there's a lily in there my mother doesn't like lilies we will have to pluck the lily out because Steve's mum doesn't like lilies there's the lily because it reminds her of death because you tend to have lilies at funerals it's true she doesn't like lilies but there's all sorts I don't know there's little roses in there and carnations I can see a carnation there I'm not sure what these other ones are uh, but it's beautiful I think it's very nice we got it from much Wenlock yes. today we we're going to carry it. well we walked in didn't we for our usual Saturday meal and uh, I thought I'd get my mum some flowers and I didn't realize that we'd walked in it takes us 20 minutes to walk in over over hills and slippery muddy ground and I suddenly realized we wouldn't be able to carry these back so somebody very kindly from the shop delivered it here for us now that's what you call yes. service yes. that's definitely good service yeah, surprised, although having, having said that Steve why why are flowers so expensive this is one thing I've noticed whenever you buy flowers mm. for people as a gift they are always so 
bloody expensive well i think a lot of them are imported ah. because it's probably difficult in winter particularly for us to grow flowers here so i would imagine a lot of those are imported that's the problem of course and of <laughs> needless to say at this time of the year there aren't many flowers growing so yes it's unfortunate that mother's day here in the uk falls at this time of year because <laughs> there aren't any flowers anywhere so yes that makes sense i guess they have to be imported and of course importing something like flowers must be very expensive because you've got to get the flowers from one place to another very quickly or else they'll just yes. wither away and die i don't know with those of course uh, mother's day of course is a very family event a traditional family event yes so it's a it, it's a time for the family to get together so the mother likes to be surrounded by her children her grandchildren and that will happen tomorrow because uh, my sister will be there uh, and of course my sister's also a mother so it's mother's day for her because she's got children and the grandchildren be there it'll all be a happy wonderful event we're going for a pizza oh that sounds very uh that sounds very much like the thing you would do on mother's day i know it doesn't sound very mother's day ish i can't think of anything nicer for taking your mum out on a sunday afternoon for a delicious meal and having yeah pizza i don't know yes well apparently my sister's, sister's got some vouchers Oh, so we're not even going to have to pay for it. So that's, shh, that's, don't tell mum. Don't tell anyone. <laughs> don't tell him. This is our secret between between Mr. Steve mm. and myself and also you watching out there. You might have noticed I haven't shaved, but I shall because I was saving that for tomorrow. At the weekends, I don't tend to bother to shave. You know what? I do the same thing. If I'm going to do my live stream, <laughs> I always like to let my beard grow a little bit because then when you have a shave, you have a much better shave. This is something that men will understand. So if you're if you're planning to do something nice maybe you have a date with a beautiful girl or maybe a handsome man and well you want to look good so quite often men will let their beard grow slightly so they will then have a very good shave if you let your beard grow for a couple of days and then you have a little bit of stubble on your face and then you can shave the stubble away and quite often your face will be lovely and smooth so that's the reason why mr steve's face and also my face feels like sandpaper that's the reason why and of course that'll also mean that when mum gives me a peck on the cheek yes. a little motherly kiss it'll be all nice and smooth that's it she will say oh son your face is like a baby's bottom it's so smooth of course we're really just lazy we couldn't be bothered to shave today i would imagine I that shave for two days i would imagine that when you were a baby steve your your mum must have kissed your bottom a lot because that's what they do have you noticed that some parents or they, they will they will make a fuss of their baby and they will kiss it on its bottom have you seen what comes out of there it's disgusting <laughs> no doubt also uh, mum will recall uh past events when we were when uh, my sister and i were babies and uh, the same stories that i've heard for many many years will be repeated again yesterday is it true that you were you were dif a difficult birth no i wasn't well actually i think i caused a bit of damage on the way out Ooh, dear. <laughs> what i understand but uh, i'm no i'm talking about events such as the fact that uh, apparently i was a a very sleepy contented baby mum used to tell me that she could uh, could never get me to wake up that's great it's babies are normally crying and screaming she'd put me to bed and have to wake me up for a feed apparently can i just say Eight that hours. can i just say that nothing has changed there even exactly. now even now nearly 60 years later is still 60 well nearly 60 years Not later nearly 60 years well almost Somebody said i only looked 40 the other day oh okay then but after this stubble up a little bit older <laughs> you do anyway. look a bit more mature today with your stubble but mature. what i was what i was trying to say if i can is that <laughs> i can't actually remember what i was saying now that's great isn't it no you were always like this you were always a sleepy baby i can sleep anywhere yes even now he falls I asleep i literally can sleep anywhere on a bus on a train anywhere i can sleep anywhere i think you you might be asleep now 
I don't know have it a pinch myself so it is Mother's Day and it's very interesting to note that Mother's Day is celebrated at different times of the year so for example mm. Mother's Day is celebrated in the United States and also in South Africa on the second Sunday in May Oh. So the second Sunday in May is when Mother's Day is celebrated in the United States. So today it isn't Mother's Day in the USA. They will not celebrate it until May. So normally it is the second Sunday in May. Of course, it is called Mother's Day and we call it Mother's Day here in the UK. But in fact, the original title was actually mothering sunday it was called mothering sunday but nowadays we also call it mother's day but its traditional name is actually mothering sunday and this in fact not not many people know this it is in fact a religious festival it is something that is tied in with religion and it comes on the fourth sunday of lent and that's traditionally when people would go and visit their mother they would give them gifts and tell them how much they are loved so on the fourth sunday of lent it is mother's day so it is always on a sunday so traditionally it was called mothering sunday but nowadays many people tend to adopt the american title which is mother's day so there it is I hope that helped you there are a lot of phrases in English Steve it's amazing how many phrases there are in English that have something to do with mothers Ooh. for example Ooh. here's the first one here's a good one mother load mother load mother load that's a pretty good one now this in English means a rich source of something so something that can be found in a large quantity in a certain place we describe as the mother load and as you can see the spelling is a little different there so i haven't made a spelling mistake Are you there. sure mr duncan i'm definitely sure that is not a spelling mistake not l o a d so the mother load can be something that's available in one place in a large quantity it can be real or it can be imagined as well what for is that is it mining it is connected to mining yes um, if there are large reserves of minerals gold for example yes. you might say that that area is the mother load you that found means the mother load that's it a rich source of, uh, uh, of some maybe precious element yes so minerals um, anything really certain types of metal and many other things as well we describe it as the mother load another one would you like another one here we go I would oh here's one motherboard oh we know why you said that mr duncan motherboard is connected to of course computers for all those who are big fans of computers you will know straight away what this means so a motherboard in computing is a circuit board where all the main components of a computer are fixed with extra slots for other components to be added everything like, comes from mother doesn't it even yes. the computer yes all the important things are connected everything comes from mother in fact That's the, the motherboard from. the motherboard is the most important part of a computer because yes. all of the important components connect to that so it is a very important part and everything in the computer is linked to that so it's looking after all the other components of the computer i suppose mm. in a way like a mother would look after her children yes or the way in which the components are connected yes. like like a baby growing inside the womb of the parent of the mother oh. so yes what's going on in your computer mr duncan <laughs> is it multiplying itself something is alive something <laughs> is something is being created inside my computer it does make a very strange red glow sometimes it's not the same as a bored mother then <laughs> not a bored <laughs> my, my mother gets bored sometimes when she's talking to me so another one okay. oh i like this one this is good i like this one very much <laughs> mother's ruin mother's ruin oh 
Oh, a very interesting one. This is something that I've heard of and you've heard of, mm. but you might not have heard about it out there. Mother's ruin is what is it, Steve? It's a kind of what? Alcohol. Yes, it's a kind of alcohol. It's a drink. More precisely, it is a type of gin. 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 And many, many years ago, this was actually classed as medicine. Can you believe it? People used to use this to treat many ailments, chest infections or any sort of virus. So if you were feeling a little run down or unwell, you would take some mother's ruin. <laughs> Well, they, they used to think all sorts of things in the past were good for you. I'm sure they used to think that uranium was good for you at one time. <laughs> all things lead. They used to give medicine made of lead to people, didn't they? With all these things which we now know are very poisonous and not good for you. The, the, most, uh, the one I'm always familiar with is uh, something that was used for disinfecting areas. And that was called DDT. Yes. One of the worst yeah. things you can actually absorb into your body and it was sprayed normally in a place where there was disease or if some virus was spreading it was for uh, like if you got fleas or or, or ticks or things on your yes body. of course yes it was it was just to keep a place sort of clean and certainly in places like hospitals or houses they would come around and spray this stuff and they thought it would it would help but in fact, DDT is highly toxic. It builds up in the ecosystem. We know that. How on earth did we get onto that? No, because we're talking about that mother's ruin medicine. Right. Yes, we are. So people used to drink, drink gin because what's gin? Is it juniper? Gin is made from a, a particular tr part of a tree, I think. So they probably thought that was medicinal and it would be good. But of course, it's they say mother's ruin because of course if you have too much of it you're ruined yes or you're wrecked it was also it was also called bathtub gin because some people tried making it they tried to make it in their bathtubs so it was also called bathtub gin maybe someone can tell us where gin comes from I'm sure i'm sure it's that a berry off a tree or a bush or something it's interesting also to note that while we're talking about people making their own alcohol in russia in Russia, many people make their own vodka or their own spirits. And sometimes if they make it too too strong, sometimes it's about 80 or 90 percent alcohol. So really, you are just drinking pure alcohol. And of course, that's not really very good for you. And every year in Russia, there are people who die from drinking homemade vodka. Oh. People are always drinking of, of alcohol, but yes, it puts hairs on your chest. That's what they say. They're <laughs> tough, the Russians, so they'll drink. If you can drink 80% vodka, you can uh, you can you can survive anything. Yes. Steve's being very careful what he says, you see. No, it's true. I mean, but I mean, drinking generally, that's yes. something that which which men and women now use to sort of prove how tough and and strong they are on part of the group. You know, see if you can get drunk. How many drinks can you take? I remember when I was a student, I used to do it. <laughs> I can't imagine that now. I can't imagine you being drunk. So another one ruined by drink. So let's get through these quickly. Another one for those wondering what's going on. This is Mr. Steve. And at the moment, he is visiting his mother. So it not is really here, am I? No, he's not really here, although that's that's nothing new. <laughs> <laughs> but people often say that Mr. Steve isn't all there or all here. But this is not live at the moment. This is recorded. It's Saturday night. And Mr. Steve is now with his mother. So he... what time will it be when you play this? Say three o'clock. <laughs> Who knows? I'll be well, I the pizza. I'll probably finish the pizza by now. I might be on the coffee. OK, they're having a coffee. And of course, you will be telling your mother many, many times how much you you love her. Well, I probably won't be doing that. Really? No. But will it will there be any cuddling or kissing? Well, there'll be a bit of that, but we're quite restrained in our family. So I we don't so. really show our emotions or our affection openly in public that's strange because um, because my my mum my mother is very affectionate by the way i'm giving up seeing my mum today 
you i'm giving up、are. seeing her so i can be here with you so i am sacrificing a day with my mother so we can actually do this are you sure it's a sacrifice or is it an excuse not to have to go and see your mother、Mr. actually、Duncan? actually the strange thing <laughs> is it was my mum's it my mum's idea she actually suggested it so i have a feeling my mum doesn't want to see me to be no, honest no she didn't <laughs> i wish i could have an excuse here's another one mr steve keep mum keep mum keep mum is a very interesting one now believe it or not this is actually <clears throat> rhyming slang used in london by the cockneys here hello hello my name's mr duncan and guess what i've got something to tell you and uh i don't want you to tell anyone else don't mention this i want you to keep mum can you keep mum so keep mum is an expression that means to stay quiet about something prevent to prevent something from being discussed openly so、yes. it is actually rhyming slang for stum stum which if i remember correctly i think is derived from i'm trying to think where it's derived from but i think it has something something to do with the jewish community in london i, I think so i might be wrong there、it、so this means keep your mouth shut if you keep stum it means you keep quiet you don't mention something you kind of keep it a secret or you、yes. avoid mentioning it so to keep mum is to keep quiet about a particular subject it is rhyming slang for keep stum stum that's a great word i love that oh mr steve you, you i think you will know this one i think to be mothered to be mothered because it, at this moment mr steve is with his mother and she will be stroking his head and making sure that wiping his face because that's what mothers do you、oh, see they on mother's day it's the other way round you see i'm i'm sort of showing my affection towards she doesn't have to do anything on mother's day mothers do nothing so you will be mothering your mother i'll be sunning my mother sunning her i've just made up a new <laughs> expression steving <laughs> steve will be steving his mum that's it yes so to be mothered what does it mean then well it just means that your mother is is is, is looking after you、uh, all the time and it's going to be at any age、mm. so、uh, we've got another expression which is related to this but if it to be mothered just means it to be looked after by your mother but it might not be by your mother it could be by somebody else so somebody could be paying a lot of attention to you adjusting your tie Uh, looking at you, uh, like your 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 wife, for example, if you're married, fussing could be fussing you a bit. Your your wife could be you're going out to work and she's adjusting your tie and and you're doing your shoelaces and making sure she's mothering you a bit. How annoying to be mothered. Okay then,、Just、or of, of course、fussed. we can we can also use. Molly coddled. Molly coddled. Now that was what I was accused of. Yes, that's a great,、younger. that's a great word. Molly coddle, or to be molly coddled. So to be mothered, to be over fussed. So your mother takes a lot of care and attention, or you can be molly coddled. Molly coddled. And quite often,、uh, the wife of a husband. Uh, will will take over the role of the mother in in their married relationship, and, and and the husband can end up really having somebody who's a bit like his mother. And of course,、yes. some some husbands, some men seek out women who are like their mothers. Yes, it's true because they liked all the attention from the mother, didn't have to do anything. So they want a wife that's going to cook for them, clean for them, do all sorts of things. And of course, these days, that's probably not. Doesn't happen very often because I don't think you'd be. I think you'd find it hard to find a wife now that looked after you like your mother. It does happen. Some men do look for a partner. They look for a wife who is very similar to their mother because、yes. they want to con continue to be mothered. They、yes. in they enjoy being molly coddled. Molly coddled. It's not unusual. You will find a lot of men are very soft. Underneath, and they they love that feeling of being mothered or molly coddled. Here's another one.
oh this is quite a good one steve do you like that one the mother of all so the mother of all as you can see there are some full stops that mean that the sentence continues so you can add other things to this so the mother of all normally is a sentence that means the greatest part or the most extreme thing or the best or the best the best so the mother of all shows so i think our live stream is the mother of all live streams it is the best it is the greatest you've got the mother of all computers i have that's that is actually true my computer is the very best, the greatest very high spec so you might say that my computer is the mother of all computers apparently do you know where that comes from no tell me it was it's a, quite a recent phrase apparently according to something i looked up it was after the first gulf war oh it was used to describe the mother of all battles uh or the mother of all bombs oh i so see it just means the greatest the best so it's it's a relatively recent phrase hmm. that sort of developed in the 1980s apparently oh, I see. um yeah. from the gulf somebody must have mentioned it somewhere that it was the mother of all battles or i think that's where it comes from the mother of all battles and then of course people would say the mother of all bombs so an atomic bomb would be the mother of all bombs so i think sometimes you might find that this will be used for things that are negative so you are trying to stress just how dramatic something is so yes, yes. it would appear that quite often we use this sentence to denote or to express something that's very very negative something that's very um destructive even so the mother yeah. of all wars the mother of all bombs the mother of all storms yes definitely yeah. yeah okay pretty good we are getting through these quite well i hope you are enjoying this it is mothering sunday here in the uk and mr steve at the moment is with his mother I he's am. he's not here live this is a hologram <laughs> oh i like this one this is very similar to the other one that we mentioned earlier this is very similar to keep mum but it's something else mum's the word mum's the word yes it's a very interesting phrase what does it mean steve well uh, it, it's it's to do with uh, keeping secrets again isn't it yes you express directly that you will keep something a secret you yes. are acknowledging that this particular thing must be kept a secret you will say mum's the word or maybe the person giving you the information will say mum's the word so it means that you will keep it a secret don't tell anyone yes like in a work you say you're at work and you've got lots of work colleagues around and then somebody comes up to you and says oh ah, oh i've just heard bill bill his, his marriage has broken up oh, mum's the word don't say anything keep it a secret you know it's it's used in a sort of a gossipy way isn't it quite often why, why did you choose that name i don't know <laughs> no reason oh i try to yes somebody going um a mary a, a, a husband's left her a husband mum's the word i yes. didn't tell you i didn't yes. i didn't say anything or another one is i'm planning a surprise party for for mr steve next year yes don't tell him anyone don't tell anyone mum's the word good one yes a good one <laughs> <laughs> no it's not mr steve's 60th birthday next year 40th 40th that's what he keeps telling himself so mum's the word is to keep a secret <gasps> keep something to yourself mum's the word and finally oh i think mr steve should be wearing this should i i can't even see it mummy's boy mr steve is definitely mummy's oh, boy I get used to the angle of this computer uh yes a mummy's boy is somebody it's it, it, it's a boy who really loves his mother <laughs> I've come across I'm, I, <laughs> he's this, literally physically pulling me across this, to the center this is all yours i don't know why you're giving me this one yeah it, uh, uh, mummy's boy or mother's boy <laughs> is is a is a is a boy who loves his mother and is frightened to be away from his mother 
and all the children at school. So he cries if his mother uh, leaves him. Actually, I remember when I first went to Cub Scouts. I don't know if anyone's, hopefully people know what Cub Scout is. It's a, it's a sort of uh, a little club that uh, the boys go yes. to, Cubs. Scouting. And uh, I remember when I first went, because it was the first time I'd ever been away from my mother. So I cried. What are you doing, Mr. Duncan? I'm sure people can see me. He's obsessed with the camera being in the right place, the microphone being in the right place. And me being in the right place. Are you mothering me, Mr. Duncan? That, that's another expression. If you mother somebody. Oh, well, we've had that one already, haven't we? Uh, oh, get out. Yes. So, uh, um, of course, I've grown out of it now. Uh, but yes, it's, it's, it's uh, a son. A little boy who doesn't like to be away from his mother and cries if he does. Uh, but, of course, you can... Uh, and you, the, the, your friends at school will often pick up on this. So, say your mother takes you to school in the morning and you're waving to her and she's kissing you and all this sort of thing. And if your friends see that at school, oh, you mummy's boy. Mummy's boy. Because you know, most most boys, they don't want their mother, don't want their friends to see their mother kissing them when they arrive at school. Although, as I said earlier, a lot so, of men uh, of all ages, so a mummy's boy can be any age. Any I see age. you're trying to edge back on now, are you, so, Mr. Duncan? So any, any age can be a mummy's boy. So you can be five... It can be. Or 50 or even older. Quite often we use this expression, men who don't get married <laughs> and still live with their mothers. Steady. Or with their parents. Steady. Will often be described as a mother's boy or a mummy's boy. Yes. Uh, uh, because you can't bear to leave the nest. And mother's loving arms. Oh, isn't that lovely? We have so also to today, we have some poems. Um, uh, we had one earlier from Mr. Steve. I hope you enjoyed that. We're going to have some more a little bit later on. And also we have a very sad poem later on as well. Something extra special for this Mother's Day. Before you go, Steve, can, can we have another look at the flowers? Oh, okay. I've got another expression, which oh. we haven't put on a card. Really? Be mother or shall I be mother? Oh, what does that mean then? That means uh, that you do something that which a mother would normally do. For example, if you somebody you're at a restaurant somewhere or somebody brings on a pot of tea with mm -hmm. the cups and then you decide that you're going to pour it out for everybody, well, that's something your mother might do. So you might say, oh, shall I be mother? Shall I be mother? So I'm going to pour the tea. Shall I be mother? Or if you were to serve the food uh, that's arrived on a table, uh, I'll serve that. I'll be mother, shall I? I'll be mother. It just means something that you do that your mother would normally do. Yes, that's quite... I like that expression. I think we'll leave it there because, well, basically, I think we've done quite a lot here. So Mr. Steve at the moment is probably lying asleep in his mother's arms well his... after these flowers i think i think i deserve a, a little kiss i think she'll appreciate these isn't that lovely look at uh, that let's uh, hope they last at least a week don't forget to take the lily out i think i might leave them in because they're not white lilies they're white lilies yes whenever you see white whenever uh, you see white lilies you always think of funerals well you see i don't but uh, some people do including my mother so they're sort of pink lilies so i think that uh, is a bit a bit more sort of mother's day i think anyway steve i hope you have a lovely time at your mum's yes so do i and no arguments no arguments no family squabbles no fighting i shan't remind my mother of uh, because all remember, the snacks i used to get no, remember the last that. time remember the last time you went to see your mum they had to call the police they called the police. There That's was two true. police yes. cars, a police van. They had to carry Steve's mum into a police van. She well, was, she can get very violent. She was fighting. She was kicking and screaming. They had to grab her legs yes. and arms and, and they just threw her into the van. I know it's really quite dramatic, well, but it was on the news and everything. He's joking. Oh, your hat's not straight, Mr. Duncan. Shall I be mother? Ha <laughs> ha. <laughs> I'm molly coddling Mr Duncan. OK, Steve, we will see you later. Oh, you mean uh, Wednesday? Yes, we are <laughs> going to be back on Wednesday, of course. I'm live in a minute, so don't go away. But Mr Steve is going away now because he is now with his mother. How do you want me to exit? This way or that way? Just soiree. I'll just, I'll say goodbye and just go off that way.
and there it was mr. Steve's special Mother's Day presentation flowers cards but I've noticed there is no there are no chocolates oh dear me naughty mr. Steve and also if my mother is watching at the moment hi mum I'm so sorry I can't be with you today but I have to do this unfortunately it's all right for some isn't it mr. Steve can go and see his mum I have to stay here now I will return you back live as live can be to the studio which is just over there <laughs> yes it's mother's day today mothering sunday here in the uk and it's not just mother's day here i think today should be mother's day all across youtube so if you want to say hello to your mother today feel free it's not a problem the mystery idioms i will show you once again here they are the mystery idioms here is the first one a well-known English phrase or expression so there is the first one but what could it be mm, I don't know I don't know mr. Duncan that's a very difficult one and here is the next one so these are well-known expressions in English if you think you know the answers please let me know and of course I will give you the solutions at the end of today's live stream we will be finishing in around about 20 minutes just another 20 minutes to go and then I am out of here I wonder what mr. Steve is doing now he's probably probably fast asleep curled up in his mother's arms I think so I'm pretty sure of it I had a few people during the week ask mr. Duncan can we see your snow angel again really do you really want to see my snow angel okay then just just one more time It is a Sunday afternoon we are live and there is a live view in the garden at the moment the bird feeder in the back garden although there aren't many birds today where are all the birds where are they we had a lovely woodpecker earlier a woodpecker was feeding from the peanuts so I thought I would keep the camera on the bird feeder just in case the woodpecker came back but at the moment the woodpecker has been very shy that's not very nice I hope you are enjoying the lovely sounds of outside here in the UK it is Sunday afternoon and it's mr. Duncan would you like another poem from mr. Steve we've had two so far we will be ending on a lovely poem today we will be ending on a very sad poem something very poignant to end today's live stream here is another poem for mothering Sunday so this poem is from the point of view of a mother by Janet Fisher from the very first time you hold your child their first gift is your heart forever the love you give and they return is the bond that will hold you together throughout their life your love will be a light that guides their way the beacon aglow in the darkness 
should they ever go astray. Your love will give them courage when the way ahead is unclear and will give them strength when needed to help overcome their fears. Your love will accept them for who they are, whatever they say or do. Your love will forgive unreservedly because they are part of you. It's a love that will know no barriers, have no bounds, no expectations. Your love will be unconditional, pure, with no complications. A love that remains as constant as the stars in the heaven above. A gift no money on earth can buy. The gift of a mother's love. Thank you, Mr. Steve. Isn't that lovely? What a lovely, lovely poem there. Thank you, Mr. Steve. And of course, we will have another poem to end today's live stream. There will be another one coming later on. So don't worry about that. There will be another one to end today's live stream. Let's go back to the live chat, shall we? Oh, there it is. So we have lots of people talking on the live chat. Can I apologise once again for starting late today? I do apologise for that. Um, that's because we had some some power cuts this morning. The electricity went off. And then, of course, if you are running a computer when the electricity goes off, sometimes that can have a serious effect on the computer. So I had a few problems caused by what can only be described as power cuts the electricity kept going off so fortunately it hasn't gone off for a while lots of people saying hello Eleanor hello to Eleanor hello to TS I love my mother very much thank you TS for that Mr Duncan today is a gorgeous warm day in Sicily oh thank you Maria for that it sounds as if you're having a nice day there. It's not too bad here. It is warm, but it's very damp, quite damp indeed. I was hoping that we would get the woodpecker today. I was hoping that we would see the woodpecker on the bird feeder. But unfortunately, the woodpecker is feeling a little bit shy. It must know that the camera is working. That's all I can say. It must know that I'm actually filming you can see at the moment that looks like a green finch on the the feeder at the moment on the far the far right of the screen there is a green finch eating the lovely sunflower hearts so that is actually a live shot outside you can see it's not very bright today it's very cloudy we had some lovely sunshine earlier but unfortunately the cloud has disappeared the the sun has disappeared and the cloud has replaced it that's not very nice by the way a few people last week talked about the sound quality of this live stream now i have had some some issues let's just say some small issues concerning the sound but you might notice here i have a new mixer here so the sound should sound a lot better from now on so this is a new piece of equipment to finish off my new studio setup and we have a nice new professional mixer to mix all of the sound together so i hope you can hear me very clearly today i hope i am coming through very clear indeed shall we have a look at one of my full english lessons they are available on my youtube channel and we are now going to have a look at some excerpts from full english number 17. Do you often use slang in your English? If your answer is no, then you might want to rethink what you believe slang to be. 
to speak informally can be described as vernacular or colloquial speech slang gives new definitions to existing words good examples of past slang include cool and wicked as a way of expressing that something is really good these days we might say that something is awesome or sick although having said that by the time this lesson has been watched a few times there will probably be another way of expressing how good or terrible something is using a negative word in a positive way is nothing new in the 1990s the word bad was used as a slang word for good slang is an ever-changing trend so who knows by 2020 we might be using great to mean awful and garbage to mean great in the world of slang anything is possible Here's an interesting question. What exactly are the differences between the words wrote and written? This is a very good example of how confusing English can be. The main difference between wrote and written is that one is the past tense of write. For example, I will write to him next week. I'm writing this now. And the past simple tense, which is I wrote this last week the past tense of write is wrote the word written is the past participle of write this tense shows that the action of writing took place for example we can talk about written novels or a book written at a certain time by a specific individual for example the written works of William Shakespeare we can observe how something was written. This note was written in a hurry. A verb or action that has already occurred or been carried out is a past participle. There are some words in the English language that are so lovely to say and express such a deep meaning that it is hard not to love them. A good example of this is the word paradigm. Even the sound of this word makes me go all gooey. The word paradigm is a noun that names a typical example or pattern of something. The general state or functioning of something is its paradigm. A world and the rules by which it exists can be described as a paradigm. In science, the world view of something and the methodology surrounding it is a paradigm. In linguistics, paradigm relates to the available choices for the expression of one individual syntax or sentence formation. You might say that related rules, when grouped together, form a paradigm. The word itself derives from the Latin for show, side, by side. Do you ever find yourself having to deal with someone with an axe to grind this rather aggressive phrase refers to someone who is out for revenge or is seeking to get back at someone for personal reasons they have an axe to grind we can also use this expression to describe a person who wishes to express an opinion against someone with whom they have had a disagreement the person doing the criticizing has an axe to grind. They wish to vent their personal anger at someone over an issue. That person has an axe to grind. The expression derives from the action of sharpening an axe 
before using it. Of course, the expression is purely figurative, so no one will actually be chopped up. Thank goodness. The concept of what left and right is might seem like a simple thing but in fact it can be quite confusing and even dangerous. For example what I view now as being my right and left is not the view you have. From where I'm standing this is my right side and this is my left. However to you this is the left side and this is the right. As if that wasn't already confusing, from where you are standing, your left and right depends on your relative position to me. If you were standing next to me, facing the same way, our left and right sides would be the same. However, if you were to stand opposite me, then the left side and right side would be reversed. This may seem like an innocent misunderstanding with no consequences. However, getting your right and left mixed up can lead to terrible mistakes being made. Imagine I'm a surgeon who has to remove a person's right kidney. Do I take out the one on the patient's right or my right? It would be so easy to remove the wrong one. In anatomy, we usually refer to the patient's right and left as they see it. This is also why before having an operation, a clear mark is made on the exact part of the body where the surgery will take place, so as to avoid any chance of a mistake. After all, you wouldn't want the surgeon to cut off your good leg, would you? So remember, as you are looking at me now, my right is your left and my left is your right. I think. As we have already seen today, the English language can be quite confusing especially when it comes to words that seem connected but aren't. A good example of this occurrence is the apparent similarity between the words affluence and effluence. They look similar as they only differ by one letter. The word affluence means the state of having money or more to the point having a large and considerable amount of money. The state of being wealthy is affluence. With affluence comes great influence. So affluence is the noun and affluent is the adjective. We can describe a place where rich people live as an affluent area. The word effluence is a noun that describes a substance which flows from something. For example, Dirty, contaminated water being released from a pipe into the sea is effluence. So the substance in this case is sewage. It is worth remembering that there is also effluent, which is a mass noun that precisely describes liquid waste and stinky raw sewage. Well, sadly, time has beaten us again, as it often does. Damn you, time. Damn you. But don't worry, because there will be another full English lesson coming out of your internet hole very soon.
doop 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 we are as live as live can be i hope you enjoyed that that was an excerpt from one of my full english lessons they are all available on my youtube channel the playlists are underneath this actual video so underneath this video you will find all of the playlists for my english lessons and don't forget i've been doing this for over 11 years i've been here on youtube doing this in fact this is my 12th year now on youtube thank you very much for the live chat very busy today by the way on the live chat let's have a look shall we at the live chat very quickly sylvianas or sylvana says hello antonio asks is he alive today i think you mean he is he live yes we are live i am live on youtube every sunday you can catch me live from two o'clock uk time antonio how is it going mr duncan i'm okay not too bad thank you very much even though i've had a very busy day today if you want to say hello to your mother here is the chance to do it just before we go and we will end today's live stream with a very poignant poem from mr steve long Najuan, hello to you suhaib suhaib omar says i love you thank you very much for that today's program was awesome thank you to sample account thank you very much it's very welcome you are more than welcome in fact don't forget there is a new feature now on youtube where you can actually watch the live chat next to the recording of the stream so you can actually watch the live chat as you watch the recording of the live stream and that will be available later on thank you very much for teaching us thank you our Ahmed thank you very much good to watch your lesson thank you Ajith Ajith Kumar you are more than welcome it's my pleasure I will do this for as long as you want me to Toba Tobagega oh I like your name that's an interesting name um, to be alive or live well if you are alive that means you are living but if you are live it means you are doing something at that very moment for example if you are broadcasting live that means you are broadcasting as it happens so this for example is live i am living i am alive but the the live stream means that i am here and everything is actually happening at the moment it is not recorded thank you very much we are going to end today unfortunately slightly shorter than normal a little bit shorter than normal mr steve will be back next week everything will be back to normal hopefully there won't be any power cuts because we had a few problems with the electricity this morning here it happens sometimes that is one of the problems with living in the countryside sometimes you can have problems with the electricity we will leave this special mother's day live stream with a very sad poignant poem this is something that mr steve has decided to read out for those who sadly cannot be with their mother today so this is a poem for all those who have lost their mother. As I look upon my children, I wish that I will be as great a mother to my children as my mother was to me. She always knew what to say and what I needed to hear. She always told me how it was, so simple and so clear. As a mother and their offspring do, We'd argue and sometimes part, but through the tears and drama, I still love her with all my heart. She looked the same every day, I remember from when I was young, a few lines and wrinkles there, but still my beautiful mum. 
She's always been so wise. She's always been so strong. She's always been so stubborn. And occasionally she's wrong. My mum is sure not perfect. As sure as I'm not too. But mums know you inside out and advised you as you grew. On losing your mum there is no book or instructions what to say. I hope I say the right words now as I wipe a tear away. For I love you mum, you are my world. I thank you with all my heart. I don't know why you had to go and why we had to part. <laughs>